Welcome, creators. Sit yourselves down by the crackling hearth fire and open your ears and your minds. I am Holistic Dungeon Master, and I aim to show you that anyone can become a competent, successful, and badass Dungeon Master by cultivating the many independent skills that come together to create an amazing experience at the table. Today we will examine how to leverage basic human psychology when prepping your session and why it's important to keep the player characters at the forefront of your mind. I strongly believe that as Dungeon Masters we should leverage psychology in order to craft better and more satisfying experiences for our players. A very illuminating quote from Dale Carnegie's world-famous book on human relations, How to Win Friends and Influence People, highlights a profound and overlooked human need. There is one longing, almost as deep, almost as imperious as the desire for food or sleep, which is seldom gratified. It is what Freud calls the desire to be great. It is what Dewey calls the desire to be important. When a player has spent time thinking about their character's appearance, motivation, backstory, flaws, enemies, allies, the character becomes important to them, and in-game, they want that character to be important. I mean, if you think about our daily lives, in which most of us go underappreciated for our efforts, this feeling of importance is what many players are seeking when they wish to escape into the fantasy realm of your game. This is one of the beautiful and healing things of D&D and most tabletop RPGs in general. They become a source of those basic human needs that might not be met outside of the table. This is an aspect of the benefits of Dungeons and Dragons that has been pretty well thoroughly studied and researched. Uh, I plan to make more videos about this in the future, but for the meantime, uh, to quote one, the wonderful article written by Aubrey S. Adams in 2013. On the surface, D&D may appear to be a game of simple make-believe. However, the emotions, camaraderie, and accomplishments experienced in the game are real thus suggesting that real-world needs are met through communication in socially constructed RPG scenarios. This feeling of importance is clearly, well, important. I have a feeling, and this has certainly been the case for myself and other people I've played with, that to some extent, player characters are an extension of some facet of the player's psyche, enabling them to explore that part of themselves in a safe setting. I mean, you know, as safe as a world covered with dragons and, and goblins and, and bandits could be, but you get what I mean. Safe in the real world. With all of this in mind, it's easy to see that the players can form a deep and meaningful connection with their characters and the game itself. In the words of another researcher, whose work was published in the American Journal of Psychotherapy, D&D provides players with an opportunity to explore their mental dungeons and slay their psychic dragons. I love that quote. So with all of this in mind, it must be restated. Your players want their characters to feel and be important. So we better let them feel that way. Okay, so yes, that's all well and good, but how do we let them feel more important? I hear you cry. Well, there are a number of things that could help with this. Player agency, for example. Letting character choices have noticeable and important impacts on the world around them. I very much intend to make future videos focusing on topics such as that, but for this video, I want to focus on something that the players already gave you. Why? Their character backstories, of course. That might seem like an obvious thing to keep in mind when prepping a session, but my point is that first and foremost, you should review your character backstories, their goals, their flaws, their enemies and allies, that sort of thing, before prepping your session. Spend at least five to ten minutes reading and thinking about these before you prep anything else. Michael E. Shea puts huge emphasis on this in his book, The Lazy Dungeon Master's Guide, which is a phenomenal book, by the way, go buy it, you'll be surprised by how many ways you can think of tying characters to the story. Even if you can't think of anything while prepping, now that you've primed your mind with this information, the details of the party, you are much, much more likely 
to think of something on the fly in session. And this is such a satisfying feeling when during a random NPC encounter or story beat, a way to tie the character closer to the story just pops into your head. And that's the magic. It's the magic of preparing to improvise. And your players will feel this. You've made their characters important to the story, even if it's just in some small or minor way. You've satisfied that basic human need to feel important. And that's the point when your players start to say, think, and feel, wow, this is a great game. And we want to nurture that particular feeling as much as we can here. All right, so let's get specific. I'm going to use one of my favorite PCs, Grasbog the Half-Orcish Bard. This is an excerpt from their backstory. Grasbog used to perform for the upper echelons of Waterdavian noble society at the height of his fame as a younger bard. However, he grew jaded after seeing and being involved in the gross excesses of that level of society, and so his flowery ballads and flattering prose turned slowly to caustic wit and biting satire. This didn't sit well with a particular powerful family, the House Talmordinius. They kidnapped Grasbog after a particularly scathing performance at their expense, smashed his viol to pieces with a hammer, and were about to do the same to his hands so that he might never play again before Graz managed to escape by jumping three stories from the tower in which they held him into the moat of the Talmordinius villa. Here's a scenario that might play out at the table now that Grasbog's backstory has been kept in mind. Years later, when Graz returns to Waterdeep, while drinking with the rest of the party in a tavern, a particularly drunken nobleman staggers up to the table and begins declaring to the entire tavern that this once great bard was, and starts describing the night of the performance that got Grasbog in so much trouble all those years ago. Now the player knows that their character's past actions still resonate within noble society today, and that quite possibly the Talmordiniuses still remember and have neither forgiven nor forgotten. The player now feels as though all of the effort they went into creating and crafting Graz's backstory has not been for nothing, and now there are all sorts of possibilities for adventure because of it. Not only do they feel as though their characters are important in your fantasy world, they also feel as though what they've created is important to you, the dungeon master, enough so that you've paid attention to it and incorporated it into your campaign. You fulfilled that need, that need for them to feel important, both in and out of the game. And you've proven yourself to be a competent and badass dungeon master. So there you have it. I hope I've done a good job of showing you the importance of keeping player characters in mind and providing you with a suitable example that hopefully inspires you the next time you're prepping for a session. And maybe you've even learned a little bit about the human experience along the way. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and click the bell to be notified. And remember, this world needs good DMs.